I'll try to be brief. My presentation actually is for mammologists more because many things I'm going to tell you about for radiotherapists uh, are well known, goes without saying, but what's important is that my presentation should be called uh, radiotherapy. When is it really effective? I like this topic, but for my presentation to last more than one slide, uh, then I should say something because I could see that a radiotherapy is always effective and finish my presentation at that. But I'll tell you when it's especially effective. Mindful of the radiation therapy for breast cancer patients. This is the slide which appeared in the end of the 20th century, and it was adjusted by Philip Portman in 21st century. And it looks differently now, but it's all about the fact that, of course, uh, um, radiation therapy, although it sounds paradoxical, it's most needed and most effective in breast cancer patients when there are some achievements in systemic treatment. When systemic therapy has got its efficacy, then radiation therapy becomes very important. That's where it could be useful. And nowadays, uh, mostly our breast cancer patients are so we have uh, in the middle of this uh, graph they need uh, radiation therapy and systemic treatment could be very efficient for them last portion of this graph when the significance of radiation therapy goes down it's for patients whereby systemic treatment could resolve all the problems the example of that could be patients with Hodgkin's lymphoma, whereby radiation therapy was very important at the first stage, and when the systemic treatment became very good, then it started slumping in its efficacy. Mindful of uh, treatment of patients, uh, conservative uh, uh, treatment, uh, organ sparing uh, surgeries without radiation therapy, this category of patients would be untreatable and uncurable. This is a famous meta analysis of multiple randomized uh, studies which shows that from the standpoint of local control and survival, according to all the randomized perspective trials, uh, radiation therapy increases local regional control and survival rates. As to the role of radiotherapy uh, in early breast cancer, there are two trials that are four years uh, apart. That is the study published in Lancet in 2016 is the analysis of database from the Netherlands and the authors of this work, which is quite provocative and very interesting. They show that according to the data of the analysis, uh, breast um, conserving uh, surgeries with radiation therapy increased drastically uh, the survival rates versus the patients with mastectomy only. It's a retrospective trial, and there could be many factors which impact such final outcomes. But four years after, another trial came along. Uh, it uh, analyzed more than 2 million people. Finally, it was more than 230,000 people analyzed. This is from our, done by our colleagues from North America. Once again, this trial has demonstrated that conservative treatment together with uh, radiotherapy provides for higher outcomes and results as to the total survival vis-a-vis -vis radical surgery as mastectomy or lymph dissection. It should be noted that in the second trial, these uh, results, first of all, covered patients above 50 years of age. So in this age group, uh, uh, doing organ sparing treatment from the uh, static standpoint is not so attractive, but from the oncological standpoint, it's very interesting as to the impact of extra uh, radiation of the bed of the removed tumor. 
um, there is one large multi-site perspective trial with 20 years follow-up period, which shows that uh, bed radiation does not impact survival rate, but as to the efficacy of local control, uh, the extra radiation of the bed of the removed tumor is very effective. Uh, so mostly this extra irradiation is very good for the bad irradiation, especially for young uh, women with un uh, adverse subtype as a uh, triple negative uh, breast cancer. We should think about it, and surgeons should be ready for it. Why do I bring it up in details? To adequately radiate the bed, you should mark it in a good way. I mean, surgeons should mark it uh, peer up. Uh, otherwise, it won't be possible to do it in a good way. As to the impact of radiation therapy for patients with uh, organ sparing treatment in elderly patients above uh, 70 with luminal subtypes of milk breast cancer. This therapy might reduce the effect of the radiation therapy, but from the survival rate standpoint, there are no big differences. From the standpoint of local regional control, uh, radiation therapy reduces relapse risk. And in this category of patients, it should be done as a compulsory treatment option. There is a very interesting trial, multi-site perspective European trial, which focuses on uh, the ability of uh, uh, reducing the hormonal therapy for patients with um, organ sparing treatment and then chemotherapy. Uh, later on, we'll receive the results. As to the radiation therapy per se, uh, there is no need for us to doubt its efficacy, but there is one big issue or problem we have been dealing with that as radiation therapeutics. It's cardiotoxicity because on the verge of the centuries and at the outset of 21st century, there were lots of publications showing that standard conventional radiation therapy, even at 3D planning, it's associated with, uh, if it's left side, it's associated with very big risk of adverse events and lots of complications on behalf of cardiovascular system. And not only that, because smoking women are in higher risk of induced non-small cell lung cancer and towards this and the reduction of radiation load upon the surrounding tissues is very important for the development of radiation therapy in 21st century. At the outset of this century, several very interesting and fascinating and important trials started in 2016. Uh, the results were published in one of the uh, multi-site perspective uh, clinical trials of therapy and partial radiation therapy on the residual bed of the tumor as the alternative of the radiation of whole breast. The idea is that due to the reduction of volume, we significantly reduce adverse impact of radiation therapy upon the surrounding normal tissues. But alongside with that, it turns out that from the standpoint of local control, everything is very successful. But it turns out that a such type of radiation therapy also improves drastically the cosmetic effect. As to uh, radiation therapy after mastectomy, the mastectomy, and, um, it could not be always radical mastectomy, but it could be mastectomy with preservation of alveolar complex. Uh, Oftentimes, big volumes of uh, milk gland are not removed yet. Here is one of the examples what it could entail. A relapse in one of the patients with a uh, uh, skin um, and organ uh, conserving uh, mastectomy implant and prosthesis was inserted. It's a very big risk oftentimes. So in such patients, uh, as whether well, radiation therapy should be done or should should not be done. Of course, it's highly judgmental, maybe, but surgeons and uh, radiation therapeutists should think about it. As to the radical mastectomy, uh, multiple
clinical perspective, randomized uh, trials show that radiation therapy is very good for T3 and T4 masses. And very important is the issue of the number of uh, involved lymph nodes. We cannot digress from this study, although it was published six years ago, and it was based on meta-analysis of perspective randomized trials uh, uh, done even before than that. But on the basis of this basic meta-analysis, it was shown that when uh, from one to three regional nodes are involved, and more than three uh, regional nodes are uh, involved, uh, the input of radiation therapy into increased indicators of survival is high. In both instances, uh, radiation therapy is a compulsory component of treatment of this category of patients, especially uh, it prevalent this effect is when we use combination of surgical treatment with effective systemic therapy and radiation therapy. Uh, this is a triadon to triad, providing for highest results. As to parasternal lymph nodes, radiation, I will not go into details, but there were four large perspective randomized trials. In all of those trials, uh, rather small uh, gain. Uh, between 1 to 3 percent in uh, relapse free survival, supply without long term metastasis versus per external radiation group. Very interesting Danish trial which shows that especially young women and then women with large masses in milk gland, uh, per external nodes radiation provides for much higher total survival and relapse free survival. This is the better analysis, which also uh, confirms the importance of radiation of parasternal nodes. But as we use imaging of lymph uh, flows uh, when we identify the treatment for uh, milk gland patients, uh, we studied perspective and randomized and retrospective studies show that if we radiate parasternal nodes in absence or in a build of uh, uh, outflows, uh, it could they survival rate could be increased. As to biological subtypes, we're tied to the schedule, so I'll be brief. What can we see? Of all, in all the biological subtypes, uh, the radiation therapy is very good when it comes to uh, relapse-free survival. As to the impact upon total survival, it's very interesting and curious data obtained by Swedish authors. Retrospectively, they analyzed the data of prospective randomized study, and they show that the uh, most gain in survival is, done, is shown in patients with uh, triple negative uh, breast cancer. That was a very interesting find as to neoadjuvant chemotherapy. The role of um, radiation therapy is so distinctly and clearly uh, maybe it's not very distinctly identified, but mindful of the trials which are available, we can see that uh, however oxymoronic it might sound, uh, it's best when we use this chemotherapy, the radiation therapy, when we see good response to systemic treatment. Uh, uh, that brings us to the first slide of this presentation where we started from. Unfortunately, I have to finish uh, because I think my timer is behind the real time. As to the new adjuvant chemotherapy, I can see uh, that when we can achieve good and complete pathological morphological response in 46% of patients, especially in triple negative uh, breast cancer and um, ex dermal growth factor, do we need surgery or not? That's where I would like to finish my presentation. It may well be that in the nearest future we'll redefine this concept. Are there patients whereby uh, chemo uh, radiation therapy could be used instead of surgery? This is very intriguing. The answer will be in the future, like five, 15 years from now, maybe. Thank you very much, Sergei Nikolaevich.